Bang! Needs and odds. I'm Jared, my lovely wife Kara's at work, and today we are going to be sharpening this Tonto on the Hinder Eclipse. This has a, a spear point American Tonto. It's an American Tonto because this is straight right here instead of rounded. So let's just get into it. I'm going to be starting off with diamond plates. I might move to a different kind of stone. I'm not sure. But the video isn't necessarily about what I'm sharpening with, even though that will, you know, come into play. Mostly just about what I'm sharpening, which is a Tonto. And this one is in 20 CV. This is a 300 grit diamond plate from Ultra Sharp. You can get all three, the 300, 600, and 1200 grit diamond stone in the um, links below in my sharpening supplies. First, let's find our angle. We want to start off by sharpening the biggest part first, the biggest portion first. So let's find our angle. That looks like a pretty good angle right there. Let me just test it. This does have a factory edge, but it also has some damage to the edge that I could not strap out. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line my hand up. Let me show you, facing you. So I'm going to line this line right here. And you could do this with any part of the knife. Just find a spot, and then I am measuring the distance between the spine of the blade and the stone. And that is going to be the angle I am going to keep the entire time. So now I'm going to mark a little line on my finger so that I keep repeating it. Now I'm going to match it to the other side, which is bang right there, right basically in the middle of my thumb usually right about there um i do have some more diamond plates over here that we might be testing out and trying as we're going along just depends on how it goes let's get to going so i like to do diamond plates dry but people tend to have problems sharpening tontos because it's kind of like sharpening two knives at once the most important thing is just marrying the two edges together, which is going to be when we put this edge to this edge and make this little portion right there. Let's look at it. So you see we're having, we're not hitting the heel yet. So we're going to do a little bit farther until we get that heel. I don't want to do really anything extra to get to the heel aside from just continue to keep sharpening. I can go straight across just like this. If I go off the stone like this, I got to make sure I'm holding it flat. Make sure you do not teeter in any direction at all. Keep it nice and flat the same way you would go across this way. If you go off the stone this way, make sure you're still holding it nice and flat. Otherwise your angle will change and it, you won't be happy especially if you want it to be nice and straight. There we go. We got it. Nice and flat, nice and straight. We do have a burr all the way down, nice and small burr, which is what I'm looking for because I'm trying to remove the least amount of steel as possible. Now, if you're beginning, you might want to make a little bit bigger of a burr so that you can feel it. Now I do have an entire sharpening playlist. So if you are having questions that I'm not answering, you can check out that playlist and I might have the answers in there for you. Let's go to this side. So I'm gonna do the same part, that same line that's right there on the spine. That's where I'm gonna match my line up to, which I'm talking about this line right here. I'm gonna match it straight up right there. Let's get it. And like I said, I do have a whole sharpening playlist full of tons of sharpening um, tips and tricks and stones and different sharpening uh, stuff. So check it out. Just wanted to make sure my angle was really good. 
And it is. This table is a little wobbly. Um, normally, you, you don't want to sharpen on a table that bounces around like this. I'm pretty confident. But I recommend you sharpen on a very firm, non-movable place. This is the best spot for me to get the camera angles. And I can lift the table up to the right height and everything. I might move it actually just a little bit towards me because I am getting a lot more wobble than normal. So I'm just going to move you guys just slightly this way, right there. I'm going to move this this way. I'll get a little less wobble right here. Let me make sure you guys can still see me good. All right. Let's check it. Oh yeah, she looks beautiful. Just beautiful. Come on, focus. Oh, no, actually, yeah, we're hitting that end right here. Doesn't look like it because I went two different directions, but that is all my grit. It's just I went from a push to um, an angle. Just to show you what I mean, you've seen the two different grip patterns going two different directions. What I'll do is here, I'll make them all the exact same direction so you can really see that we hit everything. Okay. Eh, a little bit more. I think actually I was missing one little spot. Almost. Now, I usually sharpen on my diamonds dry. Unless if they are like infused stones or something like that. But just regular diamond plates, I always use them dry. I can just blow them off. I can just dust the steel particles off when I'm, uh, when they get uh, too covered. There we go. Very nice. I can see there's a tiny bit at the heel, but we still have other stones to go through. But it looks very, very nice. All the way across. And you want to get the entire thing. Make sure you have a burr all the way up and down. Which I actually do. So. Let's continue now we got to get the top portion which this is going to be the trickiest part for this process so let me try to make it to where you guys can see everything and i'm not blocked um i guess we'll just start with this side right here so i'm going to basically do the same thing hold my angle same way so this is my angle for this right here now I'm going to hold my angle for this right here. Now, if you're not doing the line trick, it's not that big of a deal. Just figure out what angle it is. Um, and you can make your own angle. You do not have to match the exact angle that was on the knife. You just have to continue to make the angle you are putting on, the, you know, that your new angle is going to be. And if I need to lift or drop this any, I will do it accordingly as we move along. Wow, that, that's pretty, pretty good. Let's continue. We're going straight across the stone now. Is it blurry? No. I'm just holding this at an angle. Same angle. Basically, like whatever angle you see the edge at, that's how you want to lay it on the stone. Doesn't matter if you're a little bit different than the original, as long as, like I said, as long as you just finish doing it. So let's look at it really quick. 
You can see we're missing just a little bit right there, but all in all, it looks really good. So, we just gotta continue. I might jump a stone just to uh, speed this up for you guys. So I might sharp for my next stone, I might just do it and then record the last stone. Very nice. That looks perfect. Now, we haven't married the edges together yet, which is fine. So we're not to that point. But we also don't have a burr yet. So we need to continue. You gotta make sure you have a burr. Always make sure you have a burr going before you flip or switch. You can get away with flipping without having a burr. It's not good though. Because you're eventually going to have to get a burr anyways. So you might as well do it on your coarsest stone. And it will give you less work on the next stone. Your edge will be so much better. There we go. Beautiful. All right, that's looking fantastic. Okay, so now we have a burr on this side. All the way up and down, all the way to the tip. Now let's get the other side. So, same thing, I'm going to lay it right there, just like this. Let's check it. Pretty good. Looks like when you go back just a little further. Right there. Looking very nice. We're going to start going a little bit at an angle because I'm missing all of the part by the tip. So when you come off the stone, it can help you hit some areas if you're not quite hitting them going straight like this. But like I said, you still want to make sure you're holding it nice and flat. Very nice. Got a burr all the way across. It looks really nice. Let's see if you can get it to come up. <clears throat> okay, so now let's switch stones. So we would normally go to a 600 right now. I am going to, no, I'm gonna do the 600, but I'm not gonna show you guys. And then, you know what? We might just finish on the 600. So maybe I will show you guys. I thought about using the Venise stones just to, 
put a little mirror on it, but I think we want a little bit toothier of an edge, so I don't know. Plus, I could get a very, very toothy edge on the Venise, but we'll see. Let's see how the 600 looks. We might just finish it on here. Let's get it. Now, one of the issues we had while we were sharpening is there was a couple little chips in the blade up here. Right here. I'm hoping they fully come out on this stone, which they'd feel like they are. I just have a couple more passes I'm going to hit. And then after this... This one, we will marry our edges together completely. Next side. Chips are not completely out yet. But man, that bevel is nice and flat though, ain't it? Let's look at it. Let's look at how flat that bevel is. Man, that thing is nice and flat. But, we do still have some work to do. Most of the chips are out, but man, there still are a couple more. Pretty decent chip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move over. I should have just did this on the 300. This was my fault. But we're just going to flip back over and do this side on the 600. One more time. Now I did skip forward a little bit. All I did was basically the same thing. I'm just working um, down this chip. I uh, flipped the knife over twice. So did about 20 passes on each side and then flip. I should have did this on the 300, but it's almost out now. And just a simple mistake, you know, jumping forward to a stone before you should. I thought maybe the 600 would take it out right away. And you should never think like that. Always just get it done on your first stone. 
then you don't have to worry about it going slower. You'll, only, you'll have to do half the passes on a lower stone than you will on a higher stone. Okay. Now, let's get the 600 grit on this top edge. Just looking at the edge, making sure my grip pattern is lining up really nice and everything looks really good. A couple more passes. Okay, now let's do the Mary. One, two, three. A couple more passes. We want the bird to basically just be right there, about to fold over or folding over. There we go. Now we have the burr on this side, so we are going to Now what I'm talking when I'm marrying the edge, what I'm trying to do is I want this line right here to just go together nice and sharp to a nice sharp tip. And for it to look good. And also, you know, obviously make sure my uh my apex is really good and I knock the burr off really nice. So the burr is half and half it's half on this side and half on this side so i'm going to do two more passes on this side there we go yeah. now let's go over to this side one two there we go now I'm going to do the passes on the side, one, two, this one's uh, hanging on on this side just a little bit more than the other side, so I'm just going to completely knock it off on this side, or at least as much as I can until it, there we go, folds over to that side. Let's go back up to the tip.
basically just going in a cycle one side this side this side this side then back around to get it all to be equal Now, let's remove the burr right here. There we go. Now we got the burr going in two passes. One, two. It's still hanging on on this side just a little bit harder than the other side. Not a big deal. There we go. Um, do one pass. Now let's just go all the way around. We're going to do one pass. One pass. One pass. One pass. I'm just trying to knock that burr off. Still really hanging on on this side. If I had to guess, I would guess that this um, isn't a very high HRC. I've done uh, 20 CV and M390 a lot. And I'm not saying it's low. I'm just saying it's not like really high. I would say it's like in the 58 to 60 or maybe around 60. You know, I obviously don't know that for sure. Anything, you know at all about that i just wouldn't guess that it's like 62 or 63 hrc because i feel like the burr wouldn't be as fighting as much as it is There we go. Now, hopefully, that, oh, this just gets knocked right off now. Go very lightly. All the way around. All right. Very, very sharp. Let's just look at it really quick. No chips. Now, just so you guys know, I could go to another stone right now. That was my fault, I'm trying to do this all weird on camera.
This is just a leather strap with a white compound. Let's get a piece of paper and let's check it. Here is a receipt, so a little bit harder to cut than regular paper. Now, if you notice, the transition from here to here was nice and smooth. Watch for that again. We're going to start with this first part of the edge, then we're going to transition over this hump, and watch how clean it goes. Nice and slow. Right there's the hump. Nice and clean. The paper wound up folding in my hand, but you've seen it went very clean here. We'll start right here so you can really see it. Nice and clean. Nice and clean. And right here, I could just do a push cut from there. Let's just do the top. Very nice. Very nice. Over the hump. Nice transition. Okay. Now, let's just try a little push cut. And remember, I'm doing this through a camera, guys. Very. Very sharp. Let's do that with the top. Very nice, especially considering this had chips in it. The chips were all through here, like from here, here. But there you guys go. Beautiful. Let's take one more look at it. Zoom in just a little bit. There's stuff on the blade right there. Yeah. Which way were we just now? This way? Let me just flip it this way so the light stops catching it crazy. Filming an edge is very hard. But it looks beautiful. Hopefully you guys seen that. Bang. Peace.